Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello viewers, welcome to this NPTEL MOOC course on Mathematical Portfolio Theory. Uh, in this week's classes, what we will do is we will look at the basics of probability theory. So, in the first lecture today, we will do probability theory in general in both uh, discrete and continuous time and we will talk about random variables. This will be followed by a discussion on expectation, uh, variance, covariance and correlation coefficients and then we will talk about uh, two important distributions namely the binomial distribution and the normal distribution and we will conclude uh, this discussion uh, by the end of the week uh, with a discussion on linear regression. So, we start off our lecture number 1 with basics of probability theory and the first thing we will do is we will do probability space and their properties. So, what we will do is that we will first essentially look at uh, the finite discrete space and then we will look at a, a general probability space. So, finite discrete probability space. So, we start off with a definition of what is a finite probability space. So, a finite probability space is defined as a pair omega p where the first component omega is a finite non empty set called the sample space and the second component p is a real valued function which is defined on the set of all subsets of omega and this p is called a probability is called a probability measure on the sample space omega. So, next we look at uh, some of the properties of uh, this measure p. Uh, so, the probability measure p which is defined above will satisfy the following three properties. So, satisfies the following properties. The first property it satisfies is that for all 
a in omega that is all subsets of omega the probability measure of a will lie between 0 and 1 both included. Uh, so, here I make a note that all such uh, a which are subset of omega are henceforth going to be called events. The second property which is the probability of omega and this is given to be equal to 1 and the last property of the probability measure is that if a1, a2 all the way to a n are pairwise disjoint events, then the probability of union of a i i equal to 1 to n this is simply going to be the sum of probability of the a i i is equal to 1 to n. So, this brings me to the next definition and this is sort of at, at a more elementary level than any event a and so I start off with that omega b a finite sample space. Remember we are talking about the finite probability distribution. So, let this be a finite sample space. Then for all omega belonging to omega that means each element of the sample space omega the event of this singleton event given by this omega is called an elementary event. So, accordingly once we have defined what is an uh, elementary event, so accordingly we can assign uh, the probability remember uh, the elementary event is also an event. So, we can assign a probability which will denote by p subscript of omega for each elementary event omega such that and obviously it is going to satisfy the prob prob probability or the property that it lies between 0 and 1 both inclusive and summation of p omega equal to 1 and obviously this omega must be omega belonging to the sample space big omega. So, once we have both these uh, things set up the probability measure and the probability of an elementary event. So, therefore, we can uh, define the probability measure p Uh, which you have already introduced along with the three properties. So, we will define the probability measure p in terms of elementary events as probability of the elementary event little omega this is p of subscript omega that we have already introduced. Uh, further on I can make another statement that the probability measure p in terms of an event. So, let us go back to a generic event A will be the sum of probabilities of all the elementary 
events in A and is accordingly given by probability of A is going to be simply the summation of probability uh, P subscript omega where my omega is a member of the event A. So, this brings me naturally to uh, two more definitions. The first one is, uh, so now that I have defined all these probabilities for each elementary event, so this particular set P subscript omega uh, for all omega belonging to omega. So, this set is called a probability distribution and uh, please do not confuse this with a distribution function that we will discuss uh, in the later part of this lecture. Uh, so, the other definition uh, that you have uh, so, here now once I have all the p omegas, so I am now in a position to define uh, what is known as the probability mass function. So, the real valued function f from omega to r uh, defined as, so this is going to be f of the elementary event omega since it is defined on the sample space equal to p omega. So, if I define this real valued function, this is called the probability mass function. Okay, so, continuing with our definition, uh, let us move on to uh, the notion of independence of events. So, accordingly, the collection of events A1, A2 all the way through An are said to be independent if any sub collection of this N events. So, if any sub collection uh, which I will denote as uh, A S 1, A S 2 all the way to say some A S k of events. So, that means there are S number of uh, members uh, including the possibility of course, uh, of the collection of all events. Right. So, this means including the collection of these events. This will satisfy the following. So, this sub collection has to satisfy the following property that the probability of the intersection of A s 1, A s 2 all the way to A s k, this is simply going to be the product of the probability of A s i, i is equal to 1 to k that is it is probability of A s 1 into probability of A s 2 all the way to probability of A s k. All right. Uh, so, once we have done with this uh, definition of independence, uh, we move on to uh, the definition of what is known as a random variable. So, this is a very important component from the context of the course. So, eventually what we will do is that uh, we will talk about random variable and uh, one of the main random variables that we will look at uh, during the course is going to be uh, the random variable representing the return of any asset which is in turn going to drive the notion of expected return of an asset uh, and the risk of an asset and which will then be extended to talk about uh, what is going to be the expected return of a portfolio and what is going to be the risk of a, uh, of a particular asset with the return for uh, each of the asset over you know several time intervals being considered as the random variable. 
So, accordingly we need to give a great amount of importance to what is going to be the definition of the random variable both in case of the finite discrete probability space and in case of a general probability space. So, accordingly we will now start off with the notion of random variable. So, random variable is essentially a real valued function and typically we denote the random variable x. So, a real valued function x from omega to r that is it is defined on a finite sample space omega is called a random variable on omega. Uh, so, accordingly Uh, if x is a random variable on a finite probability space uh, which you denote by omega p uh, the sample space and the, and the probability measure and uh, let my finite sample space omega have uh, n number of elements uh, omega little omega 1 through omega n with x taking a finite number of possible values say x 1 through x m uh, which would put them as a set fancy a. So, this is going to be x 1 through x m. Uh, so, remember that x is a random variable from omega to r. So, basically for each uh, omega 1 through omega n the random variable x is going to take some value. So, that means that the random variable x can take only a finite number of values and here we are looking at a setting where suppose that they take m number of finite values and those I will designate it by x1 through xm. So, that means every each of those x1 through xm is going to be uh, equal to capital X of one of the omega j's. So, accordingly, so once we have set this omega, uh, this set A of the random variables it can take. So, then uh, for each of the x size that means this x1 through xm we have the event and this uh, why I am calling it an event will become uh, clear soon. So, this x can take uh, any one of the values x 1 through x m. So, the event that x equal to x i this is going to be nothing but all those collection of omega j such that x of omega j is equal to x i. So, that means all those omega j's in the sample space which takes the value x i will be bundled together and represented as the event of x equal to x i in the chain bracket. Uh, so, this implies that uh, that the event that x is less than or equal to x i this is going to be all those omega j's such that x of omega j is less than or equal to x i. All right. So, just to wind this up, I will just say that uh, further the random variable x this describes the probability measure. So, I am bringing the probability measure into the picture again. So, describes the probability measure Uh, fancy p but the subscript x on the set a by probability subscript x of little x i. Remember this is on uh, on the set a. So, a is basically now uh, working like some sort of a sample space and this is going to be nothing but probability x equal to x i. And uh, this is called the probability measure uh, 
probability measure defined by the random variable x. Uh, so, accordingly the function a uh, small f uh, from a to r just like we had defined the small f earlier to defining the probability mass function defined by f of x i is equal to probability x equal to x i is called just like before this, this time also we are calling this as the probability mass function of the random variable x. So, here we specify that is the probability mass function for the random variable x. Uh, so, accordingly uh, we now have a definition now once we have this probability measure uh, and the probability mass function for x. So, naturally uh, we have to talk about independence. So, the collection of random variables x 1 all the way to x n some n number of random variables are set to be independent if the probability of x 1 is equal to some x 1 all the way to uh, probability of x n is equal to small x n this is simply going to be the product of probability of x i is equal to little x i i is equal to 1 to n. All right. So, what we have done so far is we have looked at what is a finite probability space and we looked at what is a probability measure and we talked about random variables and we talked about independence of events as well as the independence of event uh, under the uh, random variable x. So, now we need to move on from uh, a finite uh, discrete probability space to a general probability space to have a more general idea uh, with a particular emphasis on a continuous probability space. So, accordingly we now start on the general theory of uh, probability and we will now move on to uh, two things one is the infinite uh, discrete probability space and uh, we will talk about continuous probability space. So, we begin with a definition. So, as before let omega be a non empty set. Now, uh, in the previous case we had only talked about a probability space in terms of the sample space omega and the probability measure p. However, we now need to have an additional uh, term here and accordingly we introduce what is known as the sigma algebra. So, accordingly we can write that a non-empty collection Uh, which are denoted by sigma and this is the collection of subsets of the sample space omega is a sigma algebra if it satisfies the following properties. The first property is that omega belongs to this uh, sigma algebra. Second, if we have, so this is the second properties of closure around under countable union. So, if uh, a 1, a 2 all the way is a sequence of elements of sigma, then the union of all these a i is i equal to 1 to infinity, this also belongs to sigma. And the third property is closure under complement which says that if A belongs to sigma then the complement of A also belongs to sigma. All right. Uh, so, this brings us 
to the definition of a measurable space. So, we will first have to define what is a measurable space and then uh, we will define what is a probability space just like we had done in the finite discrete case. So, first definition uh, that is on um, what is a measurable space. Uh, so, a measurable space uh, is the pair of omega along with this sigma algebra sigma where omega is a non-empty set and sigma is a sigma algebra of subsets of omega that you have just defined. So, so this takes care of what is a measurable space and now we are in a position to talk about what is a, a probability space. So, a probability space is a triple. So, you recollect the earlier probability space only had omega and p, but now we have omega, sigma and p with the non-empty set omega being the sample space. and sigma being a sigma algebra of subsets of omega uh, whose elements are called events and p being a real valued function uh, defined on sigma and called a probability measure. So, basically the probability space is this triple omega uh, sigma p where my omega is the sample space, uh, sigma is a sigma algebra and p is a probability measure. So, now that we have introduced what is a probability measure, so we need to talk about properties uh, similar to the case we had done in case of the finite uh, probability space. So, here accordingly, so what are going to be the properties of p? So, now uh, the probability measure p uh, as defined above uh, in case of a general probability space. So, I have to uh, you know specify that. So, as it is defined above, this satisfies the following properties. Uh, the first of property is the range. So, as before for all a uh, event a in omega. So, 0 uh, less than or equal to p a less than or equal to 1. So, the probability lies between 0 and 1 uh, both inclusive. Uh, p of omega is equal to 1. So, these two properties are the same as before. Uh, however, in the last case since now we can have an infinite set. So, we will have if a 1, a 2 and so on is a sequence of pairwise disjoint uh, events, then the probability of union of a i i equal to 1 to infinity, which was earlier i equal to 1 to n, this is going to be summation of probability a i i is equal to 1 to infinity. 
so basically now we can say that uh, a probability space here is uh, uh, given as uh, omega a, a sigma p uh, where you have specified that the omega is a non-empty set or the sample space and sigma is a sigma algebra whose properties have uh, been enumerated the three properties and the probability measure uh, also uh, is has been enumerated in terms of its three properties. Okay, uh, so let us now come to the topic of distribution function uh, and we will first of all begin with the motivation of uh, why one must make use of distribution function and then we will move on to the uh, definition of distribution function in the paradigm of uh, continuous probability space. Uh, so accordingly, uh, we make the statement that so distribution function, so we just give the motivation uh, to begin with. Uh, see what happens is that in case of a finite uh, or discrete uh, probability space, uh, the probability measure uh, one uh, typically described using the probability mass function which I will uh, denote by PMF and you would recall that this was f of uh, om little omega was probability of the elementary event omega uh, is not uh, easily extendable to continuous probability. And, and, and so, because of this reason, so accordingly, uh, it is for this reason that uh, we introduce the concept of probability distribution function. So, this naturally brings us to the introduction of the definition. Uh, so, a real valued function f from r to r is called a probability distribution uh, function if it satisfies the following three enumerated properties. So, the first property is that f is non-decreasing. So, this means that if s is strictly less than t, this will imply that f of s will be less than or equal to f of T. The second property is that f is what is known as right continuous. So, that is a limit of f of t as t tends to a plus is f of a. And the last property is that f satisfies limit f of t as t tends to minus infinity is equal to uh, 0 and limit f of t as t tends to plus infinity is equal to 1. So, based on this uh, definition with this three property of non-decreasing right continuous and basically the limit as t tends to minus infinity and plus infinity we are now in a position to state two results. Uh, so, the first result state the following that let P be a probability measure on R. Then the function uh, F with subscript P to identify with the in, uh, probability measure 
from R to R define, so it is a particular function that I am defining in terms of the probability measure p. So, this function f p from R to R defined as f p of t is equal to, so I am defining this as probability of the interval minus infinity close interval t is qualifies as a probability distribution function and is called the distribution function of p. And the second result that I want to state is the following that let f from r to r be a distribution function as defined in uh, part 1. So, this be a distribution function, then there exists a unique probability measure p f on r whose distribution function is f. So, that is that if you are given a distribution function, then there will exist a unique probability measure whose distribution function is f. So, that means when you are given an f of t, you can find a probability measure p f such that p f of minus infinity t knows this is equal to f of t. So, the next thing is that we can now move on to the concept of a density functions. So, we have the definition is the following, a probability measure p or uh, equivalently in light of uh, uh, the results 1 and 2, I can uh, uh, talk about uh, a measure p and equivalently a distribution function f p uh, is absolutely continuous uh, if it has a density function f from r to r which uh, is non-negative uh, to confirm with the non-negativity of uh, probability. So, which is non-negative such that f p of t is equal to integral minus infinity to t f x d x and so accordingly probability of uh, the interval a b this is going to be integral a to b f of x d x. All right. Uh, so, now that you have defined what is the distribution function and what is the probability density function. Uh, so, we are now in a position uh, to start talking about what is the random variable in the context of a continuous distribution. So, accordingly we revisit a random variable in this setup now. So, accordingly, so I uh, will first talk about, so let uh, omega sigma be a measurable space. Right. So, a function x from omega to r that is a real valued function defined on the sample space uh, r is said to be sigma measurable if the inverse image of every open interval is in 
sigma. Remember that sigma was a collection of subsets of omega. So, what I am saying is that if it turns out that the, a, a function x which is defined from omega to r is said to be sigma measurable if the inverse image of every open interval. So, any open interval uh, uh, in r from here if the inverse image of that uh, belongs to sigma then we say that this function x is sigma measurable. So, in other words x inverse of any open interval a b belongs to sigma. Okay. So, a measurable function, so we now a measurable function on omega sigma is also called a random variable. So, that is your definition of random variable in the continuous time setup. Further, we consider the probability space omega sigma p and x being a random variable on omega sigma, the measurable space omega sigma, then this random variable x defines a distribution function which will denote by capital F subscript x and a corresponding probability measure P subscript x on R just like we had done in case of the, uh, the finite case by and I will denote this by f x of t is going to be P subscript x minus infinity close t uh, which is the same as probability of x being less than or equal to t. So, then uh, it brings us to the definition of what is independence of random variables. So, accordingly we can now talk about the collection of random variables and in this case we talk about random variables in the continuous time. So, the collection of random variables capital X 1 through X n uh, defined on the measurable space omega sigma are said to be independent if the probability of x 1 less than or equal to t 1 all the way to x n less than or equal to t n, this is nothing but the product of the probabilities of x i less than or equal to t i, i is equal to 1 to n. So, just to sum up what we have discussed today, we talked about uh, probability space, we talked about uh, a finite discrete probability space and then we extended this to uh, general probability space, uh, we talked about uh, what is the probability mass function, probability density function, uh, the distribution function and we discussed the definition uh, of the random variables in both the setups along with uh, the definition of independence uh, in both the discrete and the continuous time setup. In the next class, we will talk about uh, the moments uh, in the probability space framework and namely we will talk about the first two moments, the expectation and the variance and we will talk about covariance and correlation coefficients and we will discuss some of the other properties pertaining to them. Thank you for watching.